Fecal incontinence, Wikipedia audio. Fecal incontinence, also known as anal incontinence, or in some forms encapresis, is a lack of control over defecation, leading to involuntary loss of bowel contents including flatus, liquid stool elements and mucus, or solid feces. Phi is a sign or a symptom, not a diagnosis. Incontinence can result from different causes and might occur with either constipation or diarrhea. Continence is maintained by several interrelated factors, including the anal sampling mechanism, and usually there is more than one deficiency of these mechanisms for incontinence to develop. The most common causes are thought to be immediate or delayed damage from childbirth, complications from prior anorectal surgery and altered bowel habits. An estimated 2.2% of community-dwelling adults are affected. Fecal incontinence has three main consequences, local reactions of the perianal skin and urinary tract, including maceration, urinary tract infections, or decubitus ulcers, a financial expense for individuals, employers and medical insurers and society generally, and an associated decrease in quality of life. There is often reduced self-esteem, shame, humiliation, depression, a need to organize life around easy access to a toilet and avoidance of enjoyable activities. Phi is an example of a stigmatized medical condition which creates barriers to successful management. People may be too embarrassed to seek medical help, and attempt to self-manage the symptom in secrecy from others. Phi is one of the most psychologically and socially debilitating conditions in an otherwise healthy individual, but it is generally treatable. Management may be achieved through an individualized mix of dietary, pharmacologic, and surgical measures. Healthcare professionals are often poorly informed about treatment options, and may fail to recognize the effect of PHI. Signs and Symptoms PHI affects virtually all aspects of people's lives, greatly diminishing physical and mental health and affect personal, social, and professional life. Emotional effects may include stress, fearfulness, anxiety, exhaustion, fear of public humiliation, feeling dirty, poor body image, reduced desire for sex, anger, humiliation, depression, isolation, secrecy, frustration, and embarrassment. Some people may need to be in control of life outside of phi as means of compensation. The physical symptoms such as skin soreness, pain, and odor may also affect quality of life. Physical activity such as shopping or exercise is often affected. Travel may be affected, requiring careful planning. Working is also affected for most. Relationships, social activities, and self-image likewise often suffer. Symptoms may worsen over time. Phi is a sign or a symptom, not a diagnosis, and represents an extensive list of causes. Usually, it is the result of a complex interplay of several coexisting factors, many of which may be simple to correct. Up to 80% of people may have more than one abnormality that is contributing. Deficits of individual functional components of the continence mechanism can be partially compensated for a certain period of time, until the compensating components themselves fail. For example, obstetric injury may precede onset by decades but postmenopausal changes in the tissue strength reduce in turn the competence of the compensatory mechanisms. The most common factors in the development are thought to be obstetric injury and after effects of anorectal surgery, especially those involving the anal sphincters and hemorrhoidal vascular cushions. The majority of incontinent persons over the age of 18 fall into one of several groups 
those with structural anorectal abnormalities, neurological disorders, constipation slash fecal loading, cognitive and slash or behavioral dysfunction, diarrhea, inflammatory bowel diseases, irritable bowel syndrome, disability related, and those cases which are idiopathic. Diabetes mellitus is also known to be a cause, but the mechanism of this relationship is not well understood. Anorectal anomalies and spinal cord defects may be a cause in children. These are usually picked up and operated upon during early life, but continence is often imperfect thereafter. The functioning of the anal canal can be damaged, traumatically or atraumatically. The resting tone of the anal canal is not the only factor which is important, both the length of the high pressure zone and its radial translation of force are required for continence. This means that even with normal anal canal pressure, focal defects such as the keyhole deformity can be the cause of substantial symptoms. External anal sphincter dysfunction is associated with impaired voluntary control whereas internal anal sphincter dysfunction is associated with impaired fine-tuning of fecal control. Lesions which mechanically interfere with, or prevent the complete closure of the anal canal can cause a liquid stool or mucus rectal discharge. Such lesions include piles, anal fissures, anal cancer, or fistulae. Obstetric injury may tear the anal sphincters, and some of these injuries may be occult. The risk of injury is greatest when labor has been especially difficult or prolonged, when forceps are used, with higher birth weights or when a midline episiotomy is performed. Only when there is post-operative investigation of phi such as endoanal ultrasound is the injury discovered. Phi is a much under-reported complication of surgery. The IAS is easily damaged with an anal retractor, leading to reduced resting pressure postoperatively. Since the hemorrhoidal vascular cushions contribute 15% of the resting anal tone, surgeries involving these structures may affect continence status. Partial internal sphincterotomy, fistulotomy, anal stretch, Hemorrhoidectomy or transanal advancement flaps may all lead to phi postoperatively, with soiling being far more common than solid phi. The keyhole deformity refers to scarring within the anal canal and is another cause of mucus leakage and minor incontinence. This defect is also described as a groove in the anal canal wall, and may occur after posterior midline fissure rectomy or fistulotomy or with lateral IAS defects. Rare causes of traumatic injury to the anal sphincters include military or traffic accidents complicated by pelvic fractures, spine injuries or perineal lacerations, insertion of foreign bodies in the rectum, and sexual abuse. Non-traumatic conditions causing anal sphincter weakness include scleroderma, damage to the pudendal nerves and IAS degeneration of unknown cause. Radiation-induced phi may involve the anal canal as well as the rectum, when proctitis, anal fistula formation and diminished function of internal and external sphincter occur. Irradiation may occur during radiotherapy, e.g. for prostate cancer. Many people with phi have a generalized weakness of the pelvic floor, especially puborectalis. A weakened puborectalis leads to widening of the anorectal angle, an impaired barrier to stool in the rectum entering the anal canal, and this is associated with incontinence to solids. Abnormal descent of the pelvic floor can also be a sign of pelvic floor weakness. Abnormal descent manifests as descending perineum syndrome. This syndrome initially gives constipation, and later phi. The pelvic floor is innervated by the pudendal nerve and the S3 and S4 branches of the pelvic plexus. With recurrent straining, 
e.g. during difficult labor or long-term constipation, then stretch injury can damage the nerves supplying levator ani. The pudendal nerve is especially vulnerable to irreversible damage, which can occur with a 12% stretch. If the pelvic floor muscles lose their innervation, they cease to contract and their muscle fibers are in time replaced by fibrous tissue, which is associated with pelvic floor weakness and incontinence. Increased pudendal nerve terminal motor latency may indicate pelvic floor weakness. The various types of pelvic organ prolapse may also cause coexisting obstructed defecation. The rectum needs to be of a sufficient volume to store stool until defecation. The rectal walls need to be compliant i.e. able to distend to an extent to accommodate stool. Rectal sensation is required to detect the presence, nature, and amount of rectal contents. The rectum must also be able to evacuate its contents fully. There must also be efficient co-ordination of rectal sensation and relaxation of the anal canal. Rectal storage capacity may be affected in the following ways. Surgery involving the rectum, radiotherapy directed at the rectum, and inflammatory bowel disease can cause scarring, which may result in the walls of the rectum becoming stiff and inelastic, reducing compliance. Reduced rectal storage capacity may lead to urge incontinence, where there is an urgent need to defecate as soon as stool enters the rectum, where normally stool would be stored until there was enough to distend the rectal walls and initiate the defecation cycle. Tumors and strictures also may impair reservoir function. Conversely, increased rectal volume, may cause fecal loading and overflow phi. Reduced rectal sensation may be a contributory factor. If the sensory nerves are damaged, detection of stool in the rectum is dulled or absent, and the person will not feel the need to defecate until too late. Rectal hyposensitivity may manifest as constipation, phi, or both. Rectal hyposensitivity was reported to be present in 10% of people with phi. Pudendal neuropathy is one cause of rectal hyposensitivity, and may lead to fecal loading slash impaction, megarectum, and overflow phi. Normal evacuation of rectal contents is 90 to 100%. If there is incomplete evacuation during defecation, residual stool will be left in the rectum and threaten continence once defecation is finished. This is a feature of people with soiling secondary to obstructed defecation. Obstructed defecation is often due to anismus, 38 whilst anismus is largely a functional disorder, organic pathologic lesions may mechanically interfere with rectal evacuation. Other causes of incomplete evacuation include non-emptying defects like a recto seal. Straining to defecate pushes stool into the recto seal, which acts like a diverticulum and causes stool sequestration. Once the voluntary attempt to defecate, albeit dysfunctional, is finished, the voluntary muscles relax, and residual rectal contents are then able to descend into the anal canal and cause leaking. 37. Nitrates Calcium channel antagonists, beta-adrenoceptor antagonists, sildenafil, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Cephalosporins, penicillins, macrolids. Glyceryl trinitrate ointment, diltiazem gel, bethanethol cream, botulinum toxin A injection. Causes Laxatives, metformin, or listed, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, magnesium containing antacids, digoxin, lopiramide, opioids, tricyclic antidepressants, aluminium containing antacids, codeine, benzodiazepines, tricyclic antidepressants, 
selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, antipsychotics. Continence requires conscious and subconscious networking of information from and to the anorectum. Defects slash brain damage may affect the central nervous system focally or diffusely. Phi may also occur during epileptic seizures. Dural ectasia is an example of a spinal cord lesion that may affect continence. Liquid stool is more difficult to control than formed, solid stool. Hence, phi can be exacerbated by diarrhea. Some consider diarrhea to be the most common aggravating factor. Where diarrhea is caused by temporary problems such as mild infections or food reactions, incontinence tends to be short-lived. Chronic conditions, such as irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease, can cause severe diarrhea lasting for weeks or months. Diseases, drugs, and indigestible dietary fats that interfere with the intestinal absorption may cause steatorrhea and degrees of phi. Respective examples include cystic fibrosis, oralistit, and alestra. Postcholecystectomy diarrhea is diarrhea that occurs following gallbladder removal, due to excess bile acid. Oralistit is an anti-obesity drug that blocks the absorption of fats. This may give side effects of phi, diarrhea, and steatorrhea. This may occur when there is a large mass of feces in the rectum, which may become hardened. Liquid stool elements are able to pass around the obstruction, leading to incontinence. Megarectum and rectal hyposensitivity are associated with overflow incontinence. Hospitalized patients and care home residents may develop phi via this mechanism, possibly a result of lack of mobility, reduced alertness, constipating effect of medication and slash or dehydration. The mechanisms and factors contributing to normal continence are multiple and interrelated. The puborectalis sling, forming the anorectal angle, is responsible for gross continence of solid stool. The IAS is an involuntary muscle, contributing about 55% of the resting anal pressure. Together with the hemorrhoidal vascular cushions, the IAS maintains continence of flatus and liquid during rest. The EAS is a voluntary muscle doubling the pressure in the anal canal during contraction, which is possible for a short time. The recto-anal inhibitory reflex is an involuntary IAS relaxation in response to rectal distension, allowing some rectal contents to descend into the anal canal where it is brought into contact with specialized sensory mucosa to detect consistency. The recto-anal excitatory reflex is an initial, semi-voluntary contraction of the EAS and puborectalis which in turn prevents incontinence following the RAIR. Other factors include the specialized antiperistaltic function of the last part of the sigmoid colon, which keeps the rectum empty most of the time, sensation in the lining of the rectum and the anal canal to detect when there is stool present, its consistency and quantity and the presence of normal rectoanal reflexes and defecation cycle which completely evacuates stool from the rectum and anal canal. Problems affecting any of these mechanisms and factors may be involved in the cause. Congenital Anal Canal Identification of the exact causes usually begins with a thorough medical history, including detailed questioning about symptoms, bowel habits, diet, medication, and other medical problems. Digital rectal examination is performed to assess as resting pressure and voluntary contraction of the sphincter complex and puborectalis. Anal sphincter defects, rectal prolapse, and abnormal perineal descent may be detected. Anorectal physiology tests assess the functioning of the anorectal anatomy. 
Anorectal manometry records the pressure exerted by the anal sphincters and puborectalis during rest and during contraction. The procedure is also able to assess sensitivity of the anal canal and rectum. Anal electromyography tests for nerve damage, which is often associated with obstetric injury. Pudendal nerve terminal motor latency tests for damage to the pudendal motor nerves. Proctography, also known as defecography, shows how much stool the rectum can hold, how well the rectum holds it, and how well the rectum can evacuate the stool. It will also highlight defects in the structure of the rectum such as internal rectal intussusception. Dynamic pelvic MRI also called MRI defecography is an alternative which is better for some problems but not as good for other problems. Proctosigmoidoscopy involves the insertion of an endoscope into the anal canal, rectum, and sigmoid colon. The procedure allows for visualization of the interior of the gut, and may detect signs of disease or other problems that could be a cause such as inflammation, tumors, or scar tissue. Endoanal ultrasound, which some consider to be the gold standard for detection of anal canal lesions, evaluates the structure of the anal sphincters, and may detect occult sphincter tears that otherwise would go unseen. Pelvic floor Rectum Central nervous system Diarrhea Overflow incontinence Functional phi is common. The Rome process published diagnostic criteria for functional phi, which they defined as recurrent uncontrolled passage of fecal material in an individual with a developmental age of at least four years. The diagnostic criteria are, one or more of the following factors present for the last three months abnormal functioning of normally innervated and structurally intact muscles, minor abnormalities of sphincter structure slash innervation, normal or disordered bowel habits, and psychological causes. Furthermore, exclusion criteria are given. These are factors which all must be excluded for a diagnosis of functional phi and are abnormal innervation caused by lesion within the brain, spinal cord, or sacral nerve roots, or mixed lesions, or as part of a generalized peripheral or autonomic neuropathy, anal sphincter abnormalities associated with a multi-system disease, and structural or neurogenic abnormalities that are the major cause. There is no globally accepted definition but fecal incontinence is generally defined as the recurrent inability to voluntarily control the passage of bowel contents through the anal canal and expel it at a socially acceptable location and time, occurring in individuals over the age of four. Social continence has been given various precise definitions for the purposes of research, However generally it refers to symptoms being controlled to an extent that is acceptable to the individual in question, with no significant effect on their life. There is no consensus about the best way to classify phi, and several methods are used. Symptoms can be directly or indirectly related to the loss of bowel control. The direct symptom is a lack of control over bowel contents which tends to worsen without treatment. Indirect symptoms, which are the result of leakage, include pruritus ani, perianal dermatitis, and urinary tract infections. Due to embarrassment, people may only mention secondary symptoms rather than acknowledge incontinence. Any major underlying cause will produce additional signs and symptoms, such as protrusion of mucosa in external rectal prolapse. Symptoms of fecal leakage are similar, and may occur after defecation. There may be loss of small amounts of brown fluid and staining of the underwear. Pathophysiology Phi can be divided into those people who experience a defecation urge before leakage, 
and those who experience no sensation before leakage. Urge incontinence is characterized by a sudden need to defecate, with little time to reach a toilet. Urge and passive phi may be associated with weakness of the external anal sphincter and internal anal sphincter respectively. Urgency may also be associated with reduced rectal volume, reduced ability of the rectal walls to distend and accommodate stool, and increased rectal sensitivity. There is a continuous spectrum of different clinical presentations from incontinence of flatus, through incontinence of mucus or liquid stool, to solids. The term anal incontinence often is used to describe flatus incontinence. However it is also used as a synonym for phi generally. It may occur together with incontinence of liquids or solids, or it may present in isolation. Flatus incontinence may be the first sign of phi. Once continence to flatus is lost, it is rarely restored. Anal incontinence may be equally disabling as the other types. Fecal leakage Fecal soiling and fecal seepage are minor degrees of phi, and describe incontinence of liquid stool, mucus, or very small amounts of solid stool. They cover a spectrum of increasing symptom severity. Rarely, minor phi in adults may be described as encapresis. Fecal leakage is a related topic to rectal discharge but this term does not necessarily imply any degree of incontinence. Discharge generally refers to conditions where there is pus or increased mucus production, or anatomical lesions that prevent the anal canal from closing fully, whereas fecal leakage generally concerns disorders of IAS function and functional evacuation disorders which cause a solid fecal mass to be retained in the rectum. Solid stool incontinence may be called complete incontinence, and anything less as partial incontinence, liquid stool, and slash or mucus. In children over the age of four who have been toilet trained, a similar condition is generally termed encapresis, which refers to the voluntary or involuntary loss of stool. The term pseudoincontinence is used when there is phi in children who have anatomical defects. Encapresis is a term that is usually applied when there are no such anatomical defects present. The ICD-10 classifies non-organic encapresis under behavioral and emotional disorders with onset usually occurring in childhood and adolescence and organic causes of encapresis along with phi. Phi can also be classified according to gender, since the cause in females may be different from males, for example it may develop following radical prostatectomy in males, whereas females may develop phi as an immediate or delayed consequence of damage whilst giving birth. Pelvic anatomy is also different according to gender, with a wider pelvic outlet in females. Several severity scales exist. The Cleveland Clinic Fecal Incontinence Score takes into account five parameters that are scored on a scale from 0 to 4 frequency of incontinence to gas, liquid, solid, of need to wear pad, and of lifestyle changes. The Parks Incontinence Score uses four categories. The Fecal Incontinence Severity Index is based on four types of leakage and five frequencies. Other severity scales include, AMS, Pescatori, Williams Score, Kerwin, Miller Score, St. Mark's Score and the VIZ Scale. Phi may present with signs similar to rectal discharge, pseudoincontinence, encapresis, and irritable bowel syndrome. Phi is generally treatable with conservative management, surgery, or both. The success of treatment depends upon the exact causes and how easily these are corrected. Treatment choice depends on the cause and severity of disease, and the motivation and general health of the person affected. Commonly, conservative measures are used together, and if appropriate surgery carried out. 
treatments may be attempted until symptoms are satisfactorily controlled. A treatment algorithm based upon the cause has been proposed, including conservative, non-operative and surgical measures. Conservative measures include dietary modification, drug treatment, retrograde anal irrigation, biofeedback retraining anal sphincter exercises. Incontinence products refer to devices such as anal plugs and perineal pads and garments such as diapers slash nappies. Perineal pads are efficient and acceptable for only minor incontinence. If all other measures are ineffective removing the entire colon may be an option. Diagnostic Approach Dietary modification may be important for successful management. Both diarrhea and constipation can contribute to different cases, so dietary advice must be tailored to address the underlying cause or it may be ineffective or counterproductive. In persons with disease aggravated by diarrhea or those with rectal loading by soft stools, the following suggestions may be beneficial, increase dietary fiber, reduce whole grain cereals slash bread, reduce fruit and vegetables which contain natural laxative compounds, limit beans, pulses, cabbage and sprouts, reduce spices, reduce artificial sweeteners, Reduce alcohol, reduce lactose if there is some degree of lactase deficiency, and reduce caffeine. Caffeine lowers the resting tone of the anal canal and also causes diarrhea. Excessive doses of vitamin C, magnesium, phosphorus, and slash or calcium supplements may increase phi. Reducing a lester fat substitute, which can cause diarrhea may also help. Pharmacological management may include anti-diarrheal slash constipating agents and laxative slash stool bulking agents stopping or substituting any previous medication that causes diarrhea may be helpful in some. There is not good evidence for the use of any medications however. Definition In people who have undergone gallbladder removal, the bile acid sequestrant cholestyramine may help minor degrees of phi. Bulking agents also absorb water, so may be helpful for those with diarrhea. A common side effect is bloating and flatulence. Topical agents to treat and prevent dermatitis may also be used, such as topical antifungals when there is evidence of perianal candidiasis or occasionally mild topical anti-inflammatory medication. Prevention of secondary lesions is carried out by perineal cleansing, moisturization, and use of a skin protectant. Evacuation aids e.g. glycerin or bisacodyl suppositories may be prescribed. People may have poor resting tone of the anal canal, and consequently may not be able to retain an enema, in which case transanal irrigation may be a better option, as this equipment utilizes an inflatable catheter to prevent loss of the irrigation tip and to provide a watertight seal during irrigation. A volume of lukewarm water is gently pumped into the colon via the anus. People can be taught how to perform this treatment in their own homes, but it does require special equipment. If the irrigation is efficient, stool will not reach the rectum again for up to 48 hours. By regularly emptying the bowel using transanal irrigation, controlled bowel function is often re-established to a high degree in patients with bowel incontinence and slash or constipation. This enables control over the time and place of evacuation and development of a consistent bowel routine. However, persistent leaking of residual irrigation fluid during the day may occur and make this option unhelpful, particularly in persons with obstructed defecation syndrome who may have incomplete evacuation of any rectal contents. Consequently, the best time to carry out the irrigation is typically in the evening, allowing any residual liquid to be passed the next morning before leaving the home.
Complications such as electrolyte imbalance and perforation are rare. The effect of transanal irrigation varies considerably. Some individuals experience complete control of incontinence, and other report little or no benefit. It has been suggested that if appropriate, people be offered home retrograde anal irrigation. Types Clinical Measurement Differential Diagnosis Biofeedback is a commonly used and researched treatment, but the benefits are uncertain. Biofeedback therapy varies in the way it is delivered, but it is unknown if one type has benefits over another. The role of pelvic floor exercises and anal sphincter exercises in PHI is poorly determined. While there may be some benefit they appear less useful than implanted sacral nerve stimulators. These exercises aim to increase the strength of the pelvic floor muscles. The anal sphincters are not technically part of the pelvic floor muscle group, but the EAS is a voluntary, striated muscle which therefore can be strengthened in a similar manner. It has not been established whether pelvic floor exercises can be distinguished from anal sphincter exercises in practice by the people doing them. This kind of exercise is more commonly used to treat urinary incontinence, for which there is a sound evidence base for effectiveness. More rarely are they used in PHI. The effect of anal sphincter exercises are variously stated as an increase in the strength, speed, or endurance of voluntary contraction. Electrical stimulation can also be applied to the anal sphincters and pelvic floor muscles, inducing muscle contraction without traditional exercises. The evidence supporting its use is limited, and any benefit is tentative. In light of the above, Intraanal electrical stimulation appears to be more efficacious than intravaginal. Rarely, skin reactions may occur where the electrodes are placed, but these issues typically resolve when the stimulation is stopped. Surgically implanted sacral nerve stimulation may be more effective than exercises, and electrical stimulation and biofeedback may be more effective than exercises or electrical stimulation by themselves. TENS is also sometimes used to treat PHI by transcutaneous tibial nerve stimulation. In a minority of people, anal plugs may be useful for either standalone therapy or in concert with other treatments. Anal plugs aim to block involuntary loss of fecal material, and they vary in design and composition. Polyurethane plugs were reported to perform better than those made of polyvinyl alcohol. Plugs are less likely to help those with frequent bowel movements, and many find them difficult to tolerate. In women, a device that functions as an inflatable balloon in the vagina, has been approved for use in the United States. Surgery may be carried out if conservative measures alone are not sufficient to control incontinence. There are many surgical options, and their relative effectiveness is debated due to a lack of good quality evidence. The optimal treatment regime may be of both surgical and non-surgical treatments. The surgical options can be considered in four categories restoration and improvement of residual sphincter function, replacement slash imitation of the sphincter or its function, dynamic sphincter replacement, anti-grade continence enema, and finally fecal diversion. A surgical treatment algorithm has been proposed. Isolated sphincter defects may be initially treated with sphincteroplasty and if this fails, the person can be assessed for sacral nerve stimulation. Functional deficits of the EAS and slash or IAS may be assessed for sacral nerve stimulation. If this fails, neosphincter with either dynamic gracyloplasty or artificial anal sphincter may be indicated. Substantial muscular and slash or neural defects may be treated with neosphincter initially. 
Phi is thought to be very common, but much underreported due to embarrassment. One study reported a prevalence of 2.2% in the general population. It affects people of all ages, but is more common in older adults. Females are more likely to develop it than males. In 2014, the National Center for Health Statistics reported that one out of every six seniors in the U.S. who lived in their own home or apartment had PHI. Men and women were equally affected. 45-50% of people with PHI have severe physical and slash or mental disabilities. Risk factors include age, female gender, urinary incontinence, history of vaginal delivery, obesity, prior anorectal surgery, poor general health and physical limitations. Combined urinary and fecal incontinence is sometimes termed double incontinence, and it is more likely to be present in those with urinary incontinence. Traditionally, PHI was thought to be an insignificant complication of surgery, but it is now known that a variety of different procedures are associated with this possible complication, and sometimes at high levels. Examples are midline internal sphincterotomy, lateral internal sphincterotomy, fistulectomy, fistulotomy, hemorrhoidectomy, ilioanal reservoir reconstruction, lower anterior resection, total abdominal colectomy, ureterosigmoidostomy, and anal dilation. Some authors consider obstetric trauma to be the most common cause. While the first mention of urinary incontinence occurs in 1500 BC in the Ebers papyrus, the first mention of phi in a medical context is unknown. For many centuries, colonic irrigation was the only treatment available. Stoma creation was described in 1776. Phi associated with rectal prolapse in 1873 and anterior sphincter repair in 1875. During the mid-20th century, several operations were developed for instances where the sphincters were intact but weakened. Muscle transpositions using the gluteus maximus or the gracilis were devised, but did not become used widely until later. End-to-end -end sphincteroplasty is shown to have a high failure rate in 1940. In 1971 Parks and McPartland first describe an overlapping sphincteroplasty procedure. Biofeedback is first introduced in 1974. In 1975, Parks describes post-anal repair a technique to reinforce the pelvic floor and EAS to treat idiopathic cases. Endoanal ultrasound is invented in 1991, which starts to demonstrate the high number of occult sphincter tears following vaginal deliveries. In 1994, the use of an endoanal coil during pelvic MRI shows greater detail of the anal canal than previously. During the last 20 years, dynamic gracilloplasty, sacral nerve stimulation, injectable perianal bulking agents and radiofrequency ablation have been devised, mainly due to the relatively poor success rates and high morbidity associated with the earlier procedures. Persons with this symptom are frequently ridiculed and ostracized in public. It has been described as one of the most psychologically and socially debilitating conditions in an otherwise healthy individual. In older people, it is one of the most common reasons for admission into a care home. Persons who develop PHI earlier in life are less likely to marry and obtain employment. Often, people will go to great lengths to keep their condition secret. It has been termed the silent affliction since many do not discuss the problem with their close family, employers, or clinicians. They may be subject to gossip, hostility, and other forms of social exclusion. 
the economic cost has not received much attention. In the Netherlands, outpatients were reported to have total costs of €2,169 annually, and over half of this was productivity loss in work. In the USA, the average lifetime cost was $17,166 per person in 1996. The average hospital charges for sphincteroplasty was $8,555 per procedure. Overall, in the USA, the total charges associated with surgery increased from $34 million in 1998 to $57.5 million in 2003. Sacral nerve stimulation, dynamic gracyloplasty, and colostomy were all shown to be cost-effective. Among the most offensive insults in Japan relate to incontinence, such as kusater slash kusater and shikatar which mean shit hanger slash leaker slash user and piss leaker slash user respectively. Engineered anal sphincters grown from stem cells have been successfully implanted in mice. New blood vessels developed and the tissue displayed normal contraction and relaxation. In the future, these methods may become part of the management of phi, replacing the need for high morbidity implanted devices such as the artificial bowel sphincter. Management Diet Medication Other measures Surgery Epidemiology History Society and Culture Japan Research